Welcome back. This is me, Rajesh, reading Kamala Subramaniam's Mahabharata, the Adi Parva, Chapter Three, The Fisherman's Daughter. Four years passed in the company of his son. The king passed many happy days. Shantanu doted on him, and Devavrata was an ideal son. He was lost in his father. It seemed as though he wanted to make up to his father for all his years of loneliness. They were inseparable. The king crowned Devavrata as Yuvaraja, or the crown prince. The people were delirious with joy. Fate, all the while, was playing a waiting game. The sight of unsullied happiness is too much for her. She always manages to add the bitter drop to the cup of joy. One day, the king had gone out hunting. He was alone. As he was going along, a strange perfume assailed his senses. It was a perfume he had never known before. It overpowered him with its sweetness. Piqued by the strange perfume, the king followed it. He wanted to trace it to its source. He went on and on and on. At the end of the quest, he saw that the source was a woman. He had reached the banks of the river Yamuna. There, on the banks of the river, he saw a beautiful woman. She was in the act of tying up the boat. Her form was faultless. She was perfect. No other word could describe the beauty of her limbs, her face, her eyes. The eyes were downcast now with shyness as though she could not bear the intensity of the king's gaze. Her form was ill-concealed by the garb of a fisher girl. Shantanu looked at her. He wanted her. He went near her and said, Who are you? What are you doing here? She spoke in a soft voice, I'm a fisher girl. My father is the king of the fishermen. It is my duty to ply the boat between the two banks of this Yamuna river. The king went straight to the father of the girl and said, I am Santanu, the monarch of the race of the moon, Chandra Vamsha. I come from the city Hastina. While I was hunting in the forest, a strange perfume teased me. I followed it to the banks of the Yamuna. There I saw a beautiful woman. She tells me, that she is your daughter. I want her for my wife. The king of the fishermen was profuse in his words of supplication. He said, you are right, my lord. The perfume is part of my daughter and it led you to her. In this entire world, there is no other person more fit to have my daughter than your noble self. To be the queen of the power of our monarch is the greatest honor that can befall a poor fisher girl. I am quite willing to give my daughter to you in marriage, but, my lord, there is a condition. If you are willing to grant that, my daughter is yours. The king was impatient. He said, if it is possible to grant it, I will certainly grant you your conditions, as you call it. The fisherman said, it has been said that the son of my daughter will be heir to the throne of the king. If you promise to make the son born of her, the king of Hastina, after you, I will give her to you willingly. The king was speechless. He was thinking of Ganga, of the day when she brought Devavrata to him, saying, I present this hero to you. Take him to the home of the heroes. The face of his beloved son came to his mind's eye, the son whom he had crowned as the Yuvaraja. He thought of the bond of love that bound him to Devavrata. Without a word, Santanu returned to his chariot with a heart full of pain and a longing for the unattainable. The king returned to the city. With this, we come to the end of chapter 3, The Fisherman's Daughter.
For more stories from the Mahabharata by Kamala Subramaniam, stay tuned to me, Rajesh, on Storytime with Rajesh. This is me, Rajesh, signing off. Until next time, ciao.